in the last few lectures we have looked at method of multipliers using augmented Lagrangian right and an example could be uh, let us say you are trying to minimize this function something like this right and what does method of multipliers do or how do you augment the Lagrangian in this case. So, you define L C C which turns out to be or rather scalar here. So, we can just and for c we know that for c greater than or equal to 1 this in fact starts acting like a strongly convex objective right even though your problem is non convex to start with. The objective function here is non is basically concave, but using this augmentation you can potentially convert this to a strongly convex and that is that is a nice thing about augmented Lagrangian method. So, it does a nice regularization of loss or nice regularization of of optimization landscape. And you can convert uh, can convert non convex problems to potentially strongly convex problems right. Okay. So, non convex optimization problem we can potentially convert them into uh, strongly convex of problems. The other approach that we looked at was dual ascent. So, by the way how does the algorithm for method of multiplier works? So, for a at any iteration k we define x k to be r min of L c k ok. Then you update mu k plus 1 using this value of x k and finally, you have c k plus 1 which is some with beta greater than 1 ok. This is how the method of multiplier works. Then we looked at something called dual ascent right. And we are looking at problems of the form subject to A x equal to B ok. And what did we have in terms of uh, like as an algorithmic implementation of dual ascent? So, at iteration k so x k is defined to be r min of f of x plus new transpose a x right and then you define new k plus or let us say let us do it in two steps. And new k plus 1 it is an ascent on your dual variable nu k right. So, what was particularly attractive about dual ascent? Something that we looked at in the last class, why did we look, look at dual ascent? What can we potentially achieve with dual ascent? That is one thing. So, when this closed form expression is not known, I mean you can obtain uh, as obtain it as a x minus b where x happens to be the solution to this particular problem, but what else? 
which we looked at something called dual decomposition, right? When you have objective function that can be decomposed into several block variables, right? And the idea is now we are trying to minimize with respect to x i in let us say r sub n i summation i equal 1 through capital N or rather capital B, let me use capital B. subject to A x or let us write it even better. So, A x equal to B where you think of A as a block matrix of this form A 1 A 2 A B right and x is basically x 1 it is a concatenated sort of And we arrived at a scatter gather kind of algorithm for this, right? And the idea was scatter or the broadcast step. So, each agent or each block is going to be run by, uh, it, it basically they are going to run uh, dual, dual ascent on their own variables, right? If the if the cost function is decomposable into uh, these block variables, then at any iteration k, x i k is going to be defined as argument of f i nu k transpose, right? So, every that is true for, so every agent knows its own a i and know, know, knows its own f i and they are going to be running this particular step, right? And then there is a gather step which is basically there is going to be a centralized aggregator that is going to aggregate. So, I mean if I, if I were to combine these two steps, nu k plus 1 is nothing but nu k plus alpha k times uh, A x k minus b, right? So, in the gather step, a centralized aggregator would gather such that you can update nu k plus 1 as Okay. okay. So, every agent is going to broadcast a times a i times x i to a centralized aggregator. They would be summing that up subtracting b from it. By the way, this, this quantity is called residual, okay. It is called residual because I mean it should be satisfied with equality technically. So, if it is not satisfied with equality, this is called residual. So, the centralized aggregator would be computing this residual. And once this new k, new new k plus 1 or the new value of uh, this dual variable is available, that is again going to be broadcasted back to individual agents where they would again run this particular step. So, dual ascent, if the objective function is decom, uh, let us say you can decompose the objective function into several block variables, dual ascent in some sense allow, allows for parallelizability, right. So, Okay. So, you can make the problem parallelizable and that is one particular attractive thing about dual ascent. But what happens if I, but then dual ascent does not have this nice property of uh, method of multipliers, right, where you can convert a potentially non-convex y because let us say I am trying to, uh, again let us consider the case when I am trying to minimize f of x, right. Let us say uh, subject to A x equal to B, okay. And if I let us say on top of it, if I try to run, a, if I try to combine dual ascent with augmented Lagrangian. So, the augmented Lagrangian if I look at for any C uh, for this particular objective, it gives, it looks like f of x plus nu transpose A x minus b. Okay. 
right so even if your original f of x may have been decomposable into several block variables this one would not be decomposable anymore because you would get cross terms of the form x1 x2 x2 x3 and so on right so you cannot enjoy the nicer properties that you had with the augmented lagrangian if you try to combine dual ascent with augmented lagrangian okay is the premise clear to everyone so what do we want to do we want to retain the uh, sort of nice properties that we have with augmented lagrangian one thing that we know is the algorithm is pretty robust and it basically regularizes the uh, optimization landscape so you can basically work with strongly convex functions which are much easier to optimize but at the, at the same time it doesn't like if i try to look at do uh, augment the method of multipliers directly there is no way for me to parallelize the method of multipliers because of this particular constraint here so all the xi xj kind of terms would start appearing over here and that's when you cannot parallelize it that much so the question is can we enjoy the best of both worlds so what do we want we want uh, we want basically augmented lagrangian in some sense uh, optimization landscape and we also want the algorithm to be parallelizable Which, which which is basically property of dual ascent dual ascent or dual decomposition right and the answer to this question is yes i mean the fact that we are addressing this here is i mean it should be obvious that i mean it should work and that is the your admm algorithm or the alternating direction method of multipliers let's see how admm works okay and then i think it would be clearer so basically enjoys the best of both worlds it it has this parallelizability as well as uh, you can work with the uh, strongly potentially strongly convex uh, landscape so let's consider the problem of the form so we want to minimize so x and z are two variables and we this objective function in some sense it's decomposable in the primal variables x and z okay i mean you can view if you want to view it you can view it as fi xi it's it's exactly the same thing but uh, so let's let's just for now let's just focus on two i mean two different prime block variables so subject to ax plus bz or bz is equal to c okay so the usual method of multipliers so what would be the iteration look like for the method of multipliers so let's say i define let's for now let's fix uh, i mean we are not going to be varying our ck here or the augmentation coefficient so let's say that augmentation coefficient now is going to be rho because i'm using c to denote this equality constraint here right so the right hand side of the equality constraint so let's you uh, denote this augmentation coefficient by rho and what does rho evaluate to so first of all it's going to be a function of x z and nu right and this is going to be f of x so you see okay so this is your augmented lagrangian so if i had approached this problem using method of multipliers what would have i gotten so i would have gotten so let me at iteration k this is using method usual method of multipliers so 
so I would have gotten x x k z k which is going to be argmin of l rho x z and mu k okay and then you are going to be updating mu k plus 1 as mu k okay so this is this is for the method of multipliers and here you can see that this particular minimization is not possible here right like if i mean if you want to parallelize it you cannot achieve this particular step because it's 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 a concurrent optimization on x and z and you cannot parallelize this step and therefore i mean you cannot decompose it using the usual method of multipliers so admm is a very simple uh, modification of this algorithm and so admm in fact repeats this particular step for any iteration so let's say at the end of k minus 1 iterations you have x k minus 1 z k minus 1 and if you want to call it nu k or nu k minus 1 it's up to you since we have been calling it nu k so far so let's call it nu k so at iteration k what admm does is you basically fix the value of z and you change you basically optimize only over x so the reason it's called alternating direction of method of multipliers is basically you alternate the minimization step once with respect to x and then with respect to z so in that case we can parallelize it right because you have the current values of this every agent so let me first write this We are not. In fact, ADMM works even if A and B are not full rank. It's it's pretty robust that way. So we get current XK, and it depends on the previous value of ZK minus one. So there is no concurrent minimization that way. Okay, because if ZK is fixed and nu K is fixed, if I look at this particular objective, it's just a function of X and X here, and X here. So there is no minimization on Z, and therefore agent like agent i can minimize on its own right without having to know so if you fix that let's say then once you get your xk then this xk is basically sent over by agent 1 to agent 2 and you can get your zk which is going to be r min with respect to z l rho xk uh, z and uk so first agent 1 sort of exchanges its, its uh, zk to let us say agent 2 exchanges its zk minus 1 to agent 1 it computes xk and then it sends over this xk to the next agent okay and then finally there is like let us say again just like any dual decomposition if there is a centralized aggregator they are just going to be updating nu k plus 1 as nu k plus Is this clear? So it's it's alternating direction method of multipliers because once it you may optimize with respect to x, next then you optimize with respect to z. So agents can basically exchange their uh, solutions to the neighboring agents. Let's say in this case, uh, and then once those values are, I mean, once I evaluate my xk and the other agent evaluates their zk. Then we basically coordinate with the centralized aggregator and just sends over like we basically send over axk and b z k and that that is that is how it is ok. So in that case you can still parallelize it without having to give away the advantage that we had with the uh, method of multipliers. You, it, it I mean the same idea so you, I mean you you may define a sequence let us say that agent 1 is like at like at the end of uh, k minus 1 iterations let us say every 
Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you are going to assume that anyway. But is it, is this clear? So, what kind of convergence guarantees do we have with ADMM? In fact, ADMM is pretty robust. So, under very mild assumptions, so assumptions on F and G. In fact, uh, as I said, you do not require A and B to be full rank as well. Then ADMM iterates satisfy for any row greater than 0. So, the following thing you get residual convergence, meaning that this residual RK which is defined as a of x k b of uh, z k minus c. So, this goes to 0 as k goes to infinity. You have objective convergence meaning uh, f of x k plus g of z k that basically converges to f star plus g star as k goes to infinity. And then you have uh, the dual convergence as well, which is basically convergence on nu and it says that uh, nu k goes to nu star as k goes to infinity. There is a reason we did not use rho k, in fact it works for any rho greater than 0. You can choose to work with very large value of rho, but that it that comes at a risk of making the problem ill conditioned. You may potentially get faster convergence with larger rho, but you may also in, introduce some numerical instability because of the ill conditioning. But then yeah, I mean you do not unlike the previous case, you do not really have to in, keep increasing your rho every time. So, that is uh, that is one advantage of this. So, if you use rho, mm -hmm. You, you can you can you can use rho k plus 1 as like some c times uh, some yeah some beta times rho that is pop, that is fine I mean you would still get the convergence. So why don't we use it you can do that as I said like if you use a very large value of rho uh, I mean you you may get faster convergence and that is what because you even like in the previous case we had to be above certain threshold. So, that that is why we were trying to increase ck because we did not know where that threshold was. So, we are trying to increase it above certain c bar. First of all, that is not the case here. The other thing is if you try to increase your increase the value of rho, uh, you may get faster convergence, but it comes at the like the disadvantages that you get ill conditioning of the Hessian. So, your gradient descent or gradient ascent rather uh, iterates that may be ill conditioned, but you potentially get you may potentially get uh, faster convergence. A smaller value of rho is more stable, but then the convergence is slower. So, that is that is the trade off. So, this is another version of ADMM. So, as you can see that in nu k plus 1 here uh, we kind of I mean there is a this row sort of appears in before the residual. So, there is another form of ADMM uh, which is called scaled form ADMM, where instead of working with nu you kind of work with w which is defined to be nu over rho. So, that I mean you directly get these are iterates in terms of the residuals and this directly captures the residual. So, so the idea is, uh, so if I look at the L row x, uh, z and nu earlier, so that was what f of x plus g of z plus nu transpose Now, if I want to write it in terms of w, this would be f of x 
plus g of z. So, if I want to write it in terms of w, so that means uh, Okay. And you can try and basically multiply and divide it by 2, right. Essentially, you want to get a square completion formula. So, this what you get is f of x plus g of c plus 2 times um, let us say rho into w over 2 transpose. Okay. And if you want to do square completion here, right. So, you essentially need to add and subtract uh, plus and minus rho by 2 w norm to the square, right. And then you can complete the square, you can do the square completion here. Because you get if I you can write this as ax plus bz minus c plus w norm whole square, right. And that is how you can do the square completion as well. So, what you get is f of x plus g of z plus uh, let us say rho over 2 times Okay. And this term over here is nothing but okay. So, this is your I mean writing the same augmented Lagrangian in terms of W. So, if 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 now you try to uh, for a fixed value of w, this is what you want to optimize. For a fixed value of w and z, you first optimize this with respect to x. Then you fix your x, you get a new value of x and you fix your w and you optimize with respect to z. And then you have a final update, which is this particular update over here. And if I divide this by rho, you get w k plus 1 is equal to w k plus t residual r, okay, right. So, the final step is. which is directly in terms of the residual. So, if I simply do a telescopic kind of sum here, if I just simply add this up, what do I get? Plus sum of residuals, right. So, you can use this to monitor the algorithm directly by looking at W and that is why people often prefer uh, scale form ADMM, but that is okay. okay. So, that is what you are going to get, but it is the same algorithm, it is just a different uh, way to look at the same algorithm. Okay. I mean, I have already written sum of residuals, so let me not add. Okay.